In this video, we will learn how to solve delta problems. And what I mean by delta problems are the ones where you're solving for delta G, delta H, delta S from a table of G, H, or S values. So delta means uh, final minus initial or products minus reactants and um, if I want to get the delta G of a reaction, what I could do is I could add up all the G's for the products, subtract it from the Gibbs energy of the reactants. So on your formula sheet on the AP test, you'll see these capital sigmas, and those mean add up all the products. So add up all your products and then subtract it from all your reactants. And when we get to the AP test, and I'm going to show my work this way so you'll see, is you want to actually add up all your products get a number, add up all your reactants, get a number, and then subtract them. You would be setting yourself up for the most uh, possible credit on the AP test because there's generally a point associated to just adding up each side and then another point for subtracting them. Okay, so we're, we're given the combustion of methane, and what I want to do is I want to calculate the standard free energy change or the delta G for this uh, reaction, and since we're at 298 Kelvin, this will be delta G naught. And so my formula is delta G naught equals the sum of my G's for my products minus the sum of my G's for my reactants. And of course, there's lots of delta G formulas, but we're forced to use this one here because we're given this table over here. Okay, so that's why we have to use this one. So delta G, and I'm going to write out the formula before I get the numbers, is going to be products minus reactants. So that means I'm going to have the G of CO2 plus 2 times the G of H2O. I'm going to subtract that from uh, the G of CH4, which is methane, plus 2 times the G uh of O2. So now all I have to do is plug in these numbers. Delta G equals the G of CO2, which is, and I like to cross them off just to know that I've used them. That way I don't accidentally double up when I shouldn't. That is going to be negative 394.4 kilojoules per mole plus 2 times the G of water, which is negative 237.13 kilojoules. Per mole. I'm going to subtract that from the G of methane, which is negative 50.8 kilojoules per mole. And then I'm going to add that to 2 times the G of O. And the G of O is 0 kilojoules per mole. And the reason why it's 0 is because this is the energy required or the energy released to form this uh, compound. Well, oxygen exists naturally in the universe and on Earth, and so it actually doesn't take any energy to form. It just exists. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my delta G. Remember, I want to get my delta G for my products and then of my reactants. That way I maximize my points. When I add up my products, I get negative 868.66 kilojoules per mole. I'm going to subtract that from my reactants which is going to be negative 50.8 kilojoules per mole. So they'll actually end up be, being added to each other. And I get negative 818 kilojoules per mole. And um, that's my final answer for delta G. Now, when I do delta S, I'm actually going to just copy and paste this to save myself some time because it's going to be the same process. Now, the units are going to be a little bit different. So what I need to do is just get rid of G. But it's the same formula. And I just need to add a whole bunch of S's. S, 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 S. S, 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 S. And then now I just need to add up my products and my reactants. So the entropy for um, CO2 is going to be 213 joules divided by moles times Kelvin 
plus 2 times the entropy of water, which is 188.83 joules per mole Kelvin, minus the entropy of CH4, which is 186.3 joules per mole Kelvin, plus 2 times the entropy of O2, which is 205.0 joules per mole Kelvin. And then I want to get each side, so I have my products, and then I have my reactants. My products add up to be 591.26 joules per moles times Kelvin. Then my reactants add up to be 596.3 joules per mole Kelvin. And so delta G or delta S, excuse me, ends up being negative 5.04 joules per mole Kelvin. This number actually makes some sense because I go from three gas moles to three gas moles. Um, and so the entropy should be pretty darn close to zero because not much is changing as far as the disorder is concerned. And actually we lose uh, disorder. So somehow we become a little bit more ordered as this reaction goes on, which is not favorable. Um, but With this, we have to look at the delta H to know if this is a spontaneous reaction. Okay, so now with delta H, it's going to be the same process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my delta G equation. I'm just going to get rid of my G's, and in place of the G's, I'm going to put H's. We're going to solve for the enthalpy of um, this process. Now I do expect this to be exothermic. That is because it is um, a combustion reaction, okay? And so one thing you'll notice is that, let me go back and I'll, I'll just draw your attention to it. Oxygen does have an ent entropy value. That's because unless it's at zero Kelvin, which it's not, it's going to have some disorder. But oxygen actually does not have a enthalpy value or a heat value because it doesn't take any heat to form. It just has formed. It's just like it doesn't take any energy, but it's going to have still uh, some disorder to it. So that's why, if you're wondering about that, it is like that. Uh, the H of CO2 is negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. The H of H2O is negative 241.82 kilojoules per mole. The H of CH4 is negative 74.8 kilojoules per mole. And then two oxygens, which are zero kilojoules per mole. So all I need to do is add up my two sides. Again, I want to get the most points possible, so I'm going to show my products and my reactants. My products are going to be negative 877.14 kilojoules per mole. I'm going to subtract that from my reactants, which are negative 74.8 kilojoules per mole. And when I get that, I end up getting negative 802.34 kilojoules per mole. Now, the last problem is kind of interesting. We've just gotten in uh, part B, we got delta S, and part C, we got delta H, and I want to get the delta G value. So delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, and I'm solving for delta G. Delta G is always in joules per mole, so what that means is I need to convert this this is negative 802.340 kilojoules per mole. So negative 802.340. And I just goofed on that. I'm, I meant joules per mole. We're going to subtract the temperature, which is 298 Kelvin. And then to get delta S, I'll have to slide up. And we had negative 5.04 joules per mole Kelvin. Now that everything is in joules like I need it, I can just math this out. And what I actually get is my delta G is equal to negative 8.01 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole. And if I compare that, negative 
1 times 10 to the 5th. For my delta G, I had gotten 8.18 times 10 to the 5th, and that's in joules per mole. And so with that, I say that that's pretty darn close, so I think we've done it pretty good.